How's it going guys? It's Najam. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to review the Sigma DP1 medal as well as the Sigma DP2 medal. Now, because these are essentially the same cameras, I'm going to move one of them out of the way and we're just going to focus on one of them. Um, but I'll show you the images and I'll talk about the image quality from both of these. These are compact cameras with an APS-C size sensor and that's a Foveon X3 sensor, which is a full color sensor. Um, and it's 15 megapixels, so you've got APS-C size sensor in here. In my opinion, I wouldn't call these compact cameras. I mean, compared to the SD-1 metal, yes, they are quite a bit compact. Um, but these are not going to fit in your pocket. They'd, they are going to fit in your handbag, and they would, they're they going to fit in your jacket pocket, if you have a really big jacket pocket as well. Um, so this one right here is the DP-2 metal. And as you can see, it's a very, very simple camera. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look around it. You do have uh, the f2.8 lens on the front, which is uh, 30 millimeters. And by the way, I'm recording on a different camera. So I'll see how this one looks and how it goes. And it has leaf shooter. So if I turn it on, you can see it opens up. And there's the leaf shooter. So looking around the camera, on the top, you have a hot shoe mount. Um, you have the power button on top. You got the sensor alignment over there, as well as the mode button. Let's go ahead and show you the modes and it's got green light. Uh, you got three custom modes as well as the normal um, uh, automatic, semi-automatic and manual modes. It does have a, a video mode as well, which I'm not going to go into. And because nobody really uses these cameras for video, it looks like a VHS tape. Um, you've got the dial, the single dial over here and you've got the shutter button. Um, there's no memory card on here. But as you can see, it does have a histogram and it has a very nice layout. You got the D-pad over here as well as the middle button. Um, and you got uh, just some basic functions. Now, if you go into the menus, um, I'll go ahead and zoom in over here. You'll notice if you keep going down, uh, you can see that if you try to look out for anything special, there's just gonna, you're not going to find it. There's nothing here. Uh, there's no uh, focus bracketing. There's uh, well, it does have HDR bracketing, but there's nothing uh, over the top, over the top special. If you go into the quick uh, settings menu, you can change whatever you need to do, and there is a second one as well. Um, now this is the uh, setup that I, I I got when I got it out of the box. So I've just left it as it is. Um, you got the ISO ranges, um, and it does show that it up to ISO one sixty is a good image quality, and the rest is gonna start degrading. Uh, you got the exposure mode as well as the dive uh, drive con drive and you have the exposure conversation so it does have a HDR bracketing up to three stops and it, it does three images um, you can change the image from JPEG to raw uh, you have the exposure compensation uh, you got the drive mode again and then you got the color profile um, we don't really do anything about that the only thing I really find myself changing is the ISO but I've set up the custom control, custom modes. So custom war two and then one. I have um, on aperture priority and then I have also on shooter priority. It's a very simple camera to use, uh, and that's one of the things I love about this camera. It's just very very simple. Um, it is also a very very simple camera as well. Uh, design wise, it's uh, it's very nice and very simple. On the front, it does not have a grip, but not only does it look very very simple and it looks very stylish i really do like the design on these cameras it's also a, just a very simple camera uh, to use there's not many options the sim the menus are simple it's probably as far as experience goes this is the simplest and the most straightforward camera that i've used and i actually love it because of that it's very very quick and easy to use the camera operation might be a bit slow because of the foveon x3 sensor but as far as the menus and the way you use it, it's very simple and I really just do like using it. It's very, very quick. Uh, the build quality is also very, very nice. It feels like a very solid camera. I haven't dropped it, so I can't really say much. It, it doesn't have any weather sealing or anything like that. Uh, but it is a very, very solid camera. Now, from my experience, the autofocus isn't really that bad. The autofocus on the SD-1 metal is quite a lot worse than this. At least this has live view, which you can put, zoom in and you can just see... Uh, what's in focus and what is not is in what's not in focus it has an lcd display on the front over here and it's it's, an, it's a decent lcd the only thing is of course this is because because this is a really old camera uh, you won't find it easy to see outside in the daylight 
and the price is around 400 pounds you can get these for 400 pounds i got them both each for 400 pounds the difference between the dp1 medal and the dp2 medal is that you just have a different lens this has 19 millimeter f 2.8 on the front the dp2 medal has a 30 millimeter f 2.8 on the front um very stylish looking cameras very very nice looking and the image quality is exceptional out of these i'm going to show you some images i've taken over the years i've had these two, two cameras um, i did get the rico wild angle adapter which fits on the dp1 medal and it makes it into a 20, 21 millimeter focal length and so that is ultra ultra wide -ish, um on this and if you can't pick it up then i do recommend it now with the dp2 medal i have used the uh, a close-up adapter as well and you can use it as a macro well it's not exactly macro but it is a uh, it does focus very very close so you can get some close-up images uh, let's talk about what i like about these cameras and what i dislike so first off what i do like about these cameras is the simplicity to use it's a very easy camera to use i love that what i also like is that it is a slow camera it slows me down and i can focus on the image composition and everything it's just a very nice experience and of course the main thing that everybody likes about these metal cameras is the image quality the 4 way sensor has astounding image quality. Um, it might not have the most resolution or the most dynamic range. And, you know, it has a horrible noise performance. But we all know that. And I think there's a reason why these still go for £400 each, which is quite a lot of money for a camera that's only got one lens. Uh, it's very, very slow. It doesn't have really good image quality above ISO 400. And in my opinion, I just use the ISO 100 all the time because... If it, when you go to ISO 200, you lose a lot of the pop and a lot of the depth in the image. So stick to ISO 100. The image fidelity that the X3 sensor captures because it's layered with three different sensors it is quite uh, exceptional. Now let's talk about what I don't like about these. Um, first off, the battery life is not very good. Um, in a way, if you, were, if you want to think about these cameras, they're kind of like digital film. Uh, they're not good at ISO, high ISO performance. If you use ISO 3200, you, you're going to want to use black and white and usually in the blue layer in the uh, Sigma Photo Pro software. And these batteries get you about 70 shots. Uh, but from my experience, uh, while that is uh, true, I've gotten about 40 shots on these. But these are really old cameras. And so I'm assuming the battery life has been diminished on these batteries. But you might want to... Uh, they come with two batteries each. I've got four batteries all together. Um... Because I've got the two cameras, and you're gonna wanna, uh, if you wanna use it throughout the whole day, you wanna buy uh, more batteries as well. Um, essentially, it's like a film cartridge. You put this in, uh, and you know, you slow down. It doesn't have an optical viewfinder, which is one of the things I would love to use because I talk about the, I, the image stabilization on this, which it doesn't have any. Um, so, the, the battery life, one thing I don't like is that it's not very long. The second thing I don't like is the low light performance, uh, it is appalling. Uh, because you know i a lot of the times i go out and about in low light um and it's just not good for low light photography it's just not even if you switch to black and white it just looks really really bad and the autofocus isn't the isn't really good in low light um it, it almost doesn't really work but let's get on to one of the things i really really don't like about these is that because it doesn't have eye base or anything like that it becomes really 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 hard to use of course, the positive is that you do get high image quality because IBIS doesn't mess around with the lens alignment on the sensor as well as the it doesn't have optical image stabilization in the lens, which means it's not going to look weird in the corners. It's a perfect image from corner to corner on, on the DP2 medal. The DP1 medal does have a fringing at the edges uh, a little bit. Uh, if you stop down, image quality isn't exceptional, but the quality of the image the lens is designed for each of these cameras is absolutely exceptional. Um, the colors that come through with this, and I've compared it to the SD1 metal, which I will review uh, um, in the future. I've been using that camera, it's amazing. Um, but the one the biggest difference is that if you use different lenses on the SD1 metal, because it has the same sensor, you'll find that these lenses have, uh, they're just amazing. The, the colors that come through with these lenses, the 4 view sensor is really, really sensitive to color. That's why I, if you increase the ISO, the color turns to almost black and white and it looks like a really, really old pancake with fungus on it. But these lenses let in a lot of saturation and a lot of color. It is very, very nice. So they might not be, I mean, the DP1 metal lens might not be the sharpest in the uh, corners, 
well actually a is very very sharp it just has some fringing but the depth and the image quality the, it, the image fidelity that comes through from this lens as well as the, the wound on the dp2 metal is amazing it really is and both of these have the same build quality they're exceptional i tried to open the dp1 metal up um, because we did have an issue with the sensor where it, uh, the um, dial pad where it just sort of uh, does weird behavior uh, it seems to go away when you start using the cameras more so if you got these if you got these lying around uh, you might experience that and if you buy them off of ebay for about 400 maybe 350 if you're lucky you will you might find that it does have show erratic behavior but once you start using it it's, it kind of goes away which is weird and i don't like it but it, it, i suppose it is what it is so do i recommend these cameras i would recommend them for only a certain amount of people i would recommend them for enthusiasts who want to get a really nice camera and have a different experience i know that the image quality is really really good but i'm going to be honest with you i think other cameras around the same price point can actually give you much better image quality maybe not in terms of the depth and the color but the sharpness wise you can get a sharper image from other cameras with raw therapy you can sharpen up images in a way to make, make them look like they shot on a foveon sensor so that is something that I, uh, I think anybody should uh, will interested in these should uh, take into account and you can enhance the texture in the images uh, whereas the foveon images do look like they're made out of texture so that is one thing but i think you can sort of replicate the look if you put a little bit of work in it apart from that if you want the foveon experience if you want that foveon sensor in a small camera with one fixed lens then I do recommend these cameras. So I'd say they're made for a very niche market and not many people are going to use these. Uh, but for the people who like the Foveon image, who love the Foveon sensor look, uh, they are keeping the price up. This is why they cost 400. If you guys have any questions about these, ask me in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in another video.